Hello everyone, welcome back to Siberia. We are still in the train. We are at that college town I was telling you about, so we're just gonna get right into it. Oscar, see you later, alligator. In a while, Kate Walker. I like that. I, I, I actually had that stuck in my head, like, uh, see you later, alligator. In a while, Kate Walker. I had that stuck in my head, actually. Like, I, okay, I just repeated myself. So this is, yeah, this is where we are. Right, I'm just gonna do this real quick, cause this is, this is a long walk up here. This is where we need to get, see, remember when we wound up the, um, when the train, we wound it up, so, and then, um, you know, that made it go. We need to wind it up again, and it stopped there, but the wind up thing, if I remember correctly. That thing looks like the winding machine yeah. I used in the Valadilan station. I've got to find a way of getting the train up here. Yeah, it's all the way up there, right at the very, very end of that wall. It's all the way up there. So, I'm not gonna bother because there's nothing for me to do right up there right now. Oh my god, this, these angles. So, for right now, we're just coming down Kate here. Walker! Hey, right. Walker! Where is he? Come over here, please! Oh, there he is. I have something to say to you! Go, Kate! Why am I not moving? Oh, I have to wait for him to go back in the train. Yes, Oscar? What is it? A message has arrived for you! A message? You have been summoned to see the Rectors! They are the highest authority at the university. They want to talk to you. Talk to me? Yes, to the person responsible for the train. So, I'm in charge now, sure, okay. But why would these gentlemen want to see me at all? They do not say why, just that it's very important. Alright, so we'll be heading there in just a second. I don't remember what's on this side. Yeah, okay, that comes into play later. I'm trying not to waste time. Actually, let me go down this way. We do something with- those birds are blocking the ladder, so we need to do something to get them out of the way. I'm just gonna just tell you that now. And then, yeah, we can't go down here. Um, there's a door down there, it's locked. I'm just trying to save time. I know I'm probably, like, being a, a boring gamer right now, but... I don't know if we go up here. This map always confused me. Um, when I played it. Okay. This way is the right way to go. For what, who I want to talk to first before we go to the vectors. This dude. Hello. You're on my train, I see. Yes. I've come from Valadilen. It's been a long time since I've seen a train here. Students, did you bring students with you? No, I traveled alone. Well, almost alone. I remember around the start of fall, trains would bring kids from all around the world here to study zoology and botany, paleontology, and all that stuff. This was a great university. And it isn't still great today, then? Uh, today? <laughs> I just want to point this out. If any of you guys ever see the TV show on Nickelodeon called Doug, there's a character, the, the neighbor that lives right next to them, called uh, Mr. Dink. He, the way he speaks reminds me of him. Uh, it, he sounds so much like him. Maybe not like the tone of the voice, but just everything else about how he speaks. So I don't know if it's the same voice actor, or uh, if it's just a coincidence. Maybe it's just me, but to me, just like the way he... You can hear it in, in his words, the way he sounds. He reminds me of Mr. Ben. I don't know about you, that's just... That's just my perception. Uh, miss, forgive me, I, I gotta stick by the rules. You know, I have to man the station. I don't want to get into trouble with my superiors at the university. Uh, you understand? I feel like I've lost my way a little here. I could really do with your help. Hey, anything I can do, miss, you just let me know. I'm not hearing it now, so now I feel like an idiot. I'm sorry to junk up your station like this, but the spring mechanism on my train needs winding. 
a spring-operated locomotive. Uh, there's a thing. Yeah, and an impractical thing, too. Yeah, I always dreamed of taking a train, but now I'm over the hill. And someone has to take care of the birds, after all. Yeah, it's not in his tone of voice. It's it's more like just in how he how he says the words that he says. All these birds in a station. It's amazing. This is no ordinary station, miss. Oh no. Yeah, I hear it here. These birds are part of the prestigious University of Baruchstadt Ornithological Collection. Over the years this aviary has housed some of the most fantastic species from all over the world. And I am not exactly your typical station master either. This little world is my responsibility, and that is no easy task. I can well believe you. And you know what's the hardest? The hardest thing is to keep interspecial harmony. And one day some explorer introduced a couple of cuckoos from the Amazon. Whoa! It wasn't a good idea? A nightmare! You know, cuckoos lay their eggs in the nests of other species, right? Now, what's more, they also push the host's eggs out of the nest so that they receive all the mother's attention, right? Accursed cuckoos. Nightmare. I see what you mean. That's one tricky bird. And there was nothing you could do to stop it? The faculty declared the bird a protected species. If it wasn't for our mechanical eagle, we were sitting on a major ornithological catastrophe. You have an automaton here? A wonder of technology. It's an eagle that's mounted on rails in the air. It passes through and it swoops down to collect parasite eggs. But heck, the dang eagle's been out of order for several years. Impossible to collect the eggs myself. Why not? I, uh, I can't climb up the gangway. I fell off it several <laughs> months back and I still have a pain in my spine. Not to mention the vertigo I've been getting. I only, only have to look up in the air. Whoa. You poor soul. That must be very hard. Worst thing is, cuckoo eggs piling up in the nests. Soon the rectors are gonna notice. There's trouble in store. Big trouble. Well, I'm worried. Yep. Worried. So did you guys hear the Mr. Dink voice that I heard? Do you even know who Mr. Dink is and what I'm talking about? I think we're done I won't with disturb him. you any longer, Mr. Station Master. Welcome to Barrowstadt, miss. And that's my dog coughing in the background, sorry. Okay, so... Oh, and here we are, we're picking this up off the floor. That is a hook, that... Okay, we got the hook, and I don't think we can... Yeah, we can't go down there. And now we... Where do we go? We go this way. And this way? Yeah, this is the way to the university. Oh, there is something I wanted to do and I completely forgot. And I told myself right before starting this episode not to forget it, and I forgot it. I don't want to waste time getting it later. It will be brought up later. Take the mammoth toy. I might have to come back down here later anyway, but at least I, um, at least I'm doing this. So we are going to come up here. And that's the university. I'm just showing you guys here while we're here right now. We're gonna come in here. The rectors are gonna talk about this, so. I'll try to indicate when they're talking about it that this is what they're just. Yeah, so this is it. So we need to put an egg, I think, an egg. Yeah, we gotta put it there where it's highlighted right now to even out, to even this out. Because what you see right above Kate. Um, it's broken. It's an automaton that's broken. We need to get it working again. The way to get it working again is the eggs, which that bird dude was talking about. With the cuckoos and stealing eggs and all that. And, oh. Watch this. Hello. 
Hey, baby, you party? You sure looking mighty fine. Love those big, round eyes. Just who do you think you are? Hey, he's spunky. I'd like that in a lady. Okay, I'm hooked. Come on, Zol. I'll let you buy me that coffee. <laughs> I don't remember ever asking. Hey, don't play hard to get. I know you like it big time. Don't talk to people that way, no matter the gender. Listen, kid. Go back home and play with your toy cars and forget you ever saw me. Right, we're gonna go here. I'm gonna do the toy, the mama's toy, real quick and do it with this guy. I might have to go through all the dialogue options with him. Because I don't remember what triggers the toy. Itchy nose! Excuse me. Sir? Please, just a moment. Yes, what is it, hun? I am sorry to disturb you in your work, sir, I but... I mean, uh, do that, This sorry. young mammoth, this primigenius, is barely 40,000 years old. Fantastic, wouldn't you say, miss? Uh, yes. Probably. What do you mean, probably? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Well, oh, you, you don't know, I see. What can I do for you, my dear child? It wasn't really my intention to stop off here, but I'll confess, this university is really very impressive. Ah, indeed. There's such a tradition of learning here. And so much knowledge, a real depth of culture, intelligence, and gray matter. I myself did my studies here and never left. Actually, I'm here because I've been summoned by the rectors of the university. Oh, I see. You must have made a mistake on your enrollment form. Oh, no, no. I haven't come here to study. I have an important matter of inheritance to attend to. I have to find the heir. And you hope you will find him here? I'm not altogether sure. But you see, my train broke down coming into Barrackstadt Station. In that case, my dear, you must come to one of my lectures. Uh, here's a question for you. Do you know what the Probosidian Order is? The probo -whatian? Ah, you see? There are gaps in your knowledge that need refreshing. I feel I've lost my way a little here. I could really do with your help. Oh, my dear child, you've chosen your moment. I absolutely must finish off my lecture for this afternoon. It's a lecture about mammoths? Oh, yes and no. More specifically, it is about their migration. Do excuse me, I need to concentrate. A lecture about mammoths? Coincidence? I think not. Real quick, I want I'll to... leave you in peace. Sorry? Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. My bad, guys. Hold on. Do excuse me, Professor. Professor, sorry to... Yeah, I'm, I know. I'm rushing through that. Because I screwed what up. What is it you want to know, miss? I didn't want to trigger with the mammoth toy too early, but we do... Alright, so we have to, um... We'll do Hans... Arriving last. in Barrackstadt is an amazing experience. I've never seen such a station. Uh, you came by train? Yes. In a kind of clockwork train with a spring mechanism that winds down. Regularly. You mean you drive a train? Young ladies of today never cease to amaze me. Oh, no. I'm not the engineer. The train's engineer is actually an automaton. I am sorry. All this probably sounds very strange. A clockwork train? Driven by an automaton? I once knew a man long ago who could have invented such a train. It was he who designed the bandstand in the main square. Uh, to think that he was even capable of creating such a gadget. He was astounding, a true genius. But oddly, at the same time, he was also... almost a child. It was as if his mental and physical evolution had definitively halted at the age of ten. Can you believe that? Uh, yes. Yes. I think I can believe that. At least I'm beginning to. To tell you the truth, I'm looking for Mr. Hans Varlberg. He's the sole heir of a very unusual factory. My company is in charge of negotiations for the takeover of this factory. Uh, at last word, he was living in Siberia. So, as soon as my train is ready, I'll be continuing my journey eastwards. Siberia. Ah, Siberia. But, but what was it you said again? Said what? You mentioned a name. The person you are looking for. Varlberg. Hans Varlberg. 
Do you know him? Hans Vorlberg. How could I forget him? Such an extraordinary fellow. So inventive. We shared a passion for mammoths, you know, and we bonded over this passion. Without it, I confess, I would have had little to do with an odd, ageless f like Hans. At the time, we were both students. Well, sort of. Put it this way. Hans had special permission to attend paleontology lectures. You see, he didn't really have the necessary qualifications. In exchange, Hans did a few odd jobs around the university. Your Hans Varlberg sounds uncannily like the one I'm looking for. I'm not sure, my dear. Hans was above all questions of money and business. Just to imagine him running a factory, <laughs> perish the thought. Can you tell me a little bit more about him? He was always a mystery to me. He never said very much, and never quite seemed to grasp what you said to him. He expressed himself instead through his incredible mechanical contraptions. His inventions, I admit, have been much appreciated by the university. The few times we really did talk, it was about his strange interest for mammoths and a doll. Some sort of doll that obsessed him. A doll, you say? Yes. He kept talking about it. One day he described it to me. A sort of children's toy. A miniature mammoth mounted by a mount. It appears he found it in a cave not far from his home. The event all sounds very dramatic. His account was slightly confused, but it awoke a great interest in me. What do you mean? To my knowledge, there was only one tribe who made figurines featuring a mouth, and that tribe is the Yukols. They live in the farthest reaches of Siberia, and for them, the dolls constituted a sacred object, illustrating one of their central legends, how such a doll made the journey from the frozen Siberian north to a cave in the French Alps is a mystery to me. Even today, it is beyond my comprehension. Have you considered that Hans Varlberg was maybe making it up? You said yourself he didn't seem to have all his mental facilities intact. No, that's impossible. Hans couldn't invent the story like that. The doll is a sacred part of the Siberia legend. He described it to me in exact detail. Siberia itself is a chimera that paleontologists of the world are very fond of pursuing. My apologies, again, he said the R word. Well, he said it only once, but, uh, so far it was the second or third time in this series that, in this game entirely, that he, uh, that the R word was said. I don't know why I'm apologizing, I didn't put it in the game, but I'm playing the game, so, in that sense, I'm sorry. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. Do excuse me, Professor. There we go. Professor, sorry to disturb you again. I didn't know if having the, um, toy Professor, in I my... have brought you oh, something that should be of interest to you. Look. What have you got there, then? Let's see. An effigy of a mammoth. But this is Hans' doll, is it not? Yes, of course it is. How on earth did you... Oh, my God. It's in my hands. It exists. It really exists. Please, please do excuse me. I'm, I'm deeply, deeply moved. You see? Your Hans and my Varlberg heir are one and the same. This is incredible. After all these years, how can I ever thank you, my dear? Oh, I must waste no time. I'm off to my laboratory. I must study this carefully. May I borrow your treasure a moment? Uh, well, actually, uh... Don't worry, miss. I will take the greatest care of it. But I need to study it. You see, it has such importance to me that this very afternoon I shall deliver an impromptu lecture to my students about this very object. If you are interested in Hans Vorlberg, then it is essential that you attend. Hmm? Do you think so? Obviously. Give me your telephone number and I will call you the moment my lecture begins. I will return you your doll at the end. You have my word. In that case, see you later. Okay, we're going over here because I think we need the crap in here. We're taking that. That's another waste cylinder. What 
is it you want to know, miss? Hey, we do need to talk about the bird. My train stopped in a peculiar aviary. It's very odd. A lot of bird species seem to seek harbor there. Ornithology is far from being my favorite subject, but I must concede that the station is the pride of the university. It was initially intended for teaching purposes, but then birds started arriving from all around the world. <laughs> it seems that there are still rare species breeding there and flourishing. Are there? Can you give me an example? Hmm. I have been told about a kind of bird with peculiar habits. Let's see now, the, uh, uh, the Amazon cuckoo. That's right. But, uh, oh, I'm so foolish, I can't remember what was so special about it. Just that its behavior is very peculiar. The Amazon? Where's the Amazon? What is the Amazon? I'm sorry, my dear, but one cannot learn everything in a lifetime. Specialization is the key to real knowledge. Why don't you pay a visit to our library? Thank you very much. I love how she acts like it's the first time she's ever even heard the phrase Amazon and all that, but the other dude talked to her about it already. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. So we're going to the library. And then we'll go to the rectors just because... I don't know why. They're kind of annoying. So I really don't want to deal with them as... Unless I really have to. I think the library is up here. Wait, I think I gotta go up, yeah, up here. Oh wait, no, this is where the lecture is gonna be. So, the library. I can't remember where. Hope oh, that's the rectory. Or that's where the rectors are, I should say. Why aren't you running when I want you to run, Kate Walker? I'm gonna call you Kate Walker the way Oscar does. Not in the same tone, but I'm just gonna say Kate Walker in the same sense that he says Kate Walker. I think there's two books. I don't remember... Okay, one is definitely... Up here. The mushroom guide is important. Um... Yangola Cola. That's an important mushroom. Um... It's hard for me to read this, actually. I could have sworn there was more. I think that there is more. There we go. So that is the Amazon Memories of an Expedition. I'm thinking it's gonna be it's very close to the same type of yeah style of writing so i'm not gonna read it because it's really difficult for me to read on screen but okay so there's the cuckoo that they were t that the one guy was talking oh, sorry I'm making noise the one guy was talking about that basically everything the guy said before is what we already is the knowledge that we needed um the thing with the eggs getting stolen and all that i'm doing this i know i think at some point there's somebody up yeah there's somebody that goes up that ladder i think at some point i could be wrong I thought that's what happens. So we'll do this. Now I do believe we actually go back to the bird guy in the... Or the guy that, you know, hung out by the train station. I call him the bird guy just because he's the first person that talked about the birds. Let's go to the rectors now. So now this may be another lengthy conversation, everybody. Good day to you, gentlemen. Tell me, young lady, to what do we owe this pleasure? Please do be brief. We do not have very much time on our hands. As rectors of this university, we have serious matters to attend to, and our time is precious. 
I have heard you wish to meet the owner of the train that is currently in your station. May I know the reason for your summons? We are surprised that your train has not yet left, miss. The situation is most regrettable. The rules do clearly state that trains are meant to come and go and not remain stationary at a platform. Trains should first stop, then subsequently leave. That is the rule. We agree then, dear colleagues, that what we're dealing with is deviant behavior. This matter really is cause for concern. It's a clockwork train, you see? So it needs winding up again? Unfortunately, there is no equipment in the station to do this. A clockwork train? That's strange. How very quaint. You mean it's some sort of mechanical toy? You are causing a hindrance to us, miss. I am very hopeful that I will find what I need along the wall. The wall? Uh, miss, that really is not a suitable place for you to go. Especially for a young lady. You see, miss, we freely admit that every day we praise the existence of that particular edifice. We owe the integrity of our dear university and the fine education it provides to the wall. It protects us from harm and invasion from the unknown. May God protect us from what is beyond those ramparts, miss. Please believe me. I don't have any choice. I must continue my journey. Uh, such a decision is a correct one since it's in line with regulations. Thus your train will indeed be able to leave. And consequently cease to obstruct our station. Let me see this you one. see, I didn't actually intend to stop here, but the springs of my train gave up, you see? No, not really. You mean to say you're not a student? You have arrived a little late in the term, Miss. Enrollment for this year has already terminated. But as rectors of this university, and therefore representatives of its highest authority, we could bend the rules a little, if you like. You don't understand. I'm a lawyer from New York. Or rather, Valadilen, more precisely. My client wants to buy out an old mechanical toy factory, but its heir isn't actually dead, and is living somewhere in Siberia. I've got to get to him to sign the sales contract. You see? Not really. This is a most peculiar tale. A kerfuffle of the highest order. We have an excellent law school, if you should ever change your mind. Can you possibly help me out here? Miss, your insistence is almost verging on indecency. If you don't mind, could you not disturb us all the time? Thank you. We cannot constantly be at your disposal. We have many other requests to attend to. Can you tell me if I can find Yangalakola here in Bagstadt? <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, come again? What on earth are you suggesting, miss? How positively infuriating. I am sorry. Look, are there any... Yangalakola! The lady said Yangala Koala. <laughs> no, she said Yangala Cola. No, 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 you have no idea. It's Yangola Koala. Do try to follow. No! no! Right, Honorable Assistant Rector, sir, are you in any way insinuating that I am hard of hearing? I would not dream of such an insinuation, oh, right, Honorable Assistant Rector, sir. Dyslexic, maybe, however. I seem to remember you having a little difficulty pronouncing tricky tropical names. What? I, I think you'll find it's you who has deficiencies in the area of cultural matters. Gentlemen, please. The right pronunciation is Yengala Kola. It's a little... We understood. Perfectly. <clears throat> and uh, and why might you be looking for this Yang uh, thingamajig? Indeed. What a strange request. Why could you possibly need Yangala Koala? It is important to ask these questions because I think that's the order I have to do it. I ask these guys and then I have to go ask somebody else. So I'm just doing this in the order of events I did the last time. You wouldn't know if there is any Forest Sauvignon here in Barakstadt, uh, would this, you? This was absolutely. the question. Uh, <clears throat> when he says absolutely, he means, of course, absolutely none. What we mean, of course, is that we are absolutely positive there is no Forest Sauvignon here in Barakstadt. Really? Are you sure? Because I read in a book that Barakstadt possesses a number of plants. I wouldn't mind getting a hold of some if possible. 
out of the question, miss. Don't forget the regulations, miss. Don't forget them. Trains should first stop, then subsequently leave. And quickly! The assistant rector means to say that our priority is for you to remove your train from our station. Your research will have to wait until your next stop. Yes, that's right. Y your train must leave the station immediately, so please refrain from wasting our time in needless visitations. That idea of the station aviary is really very original. It's the pride of our university. One of the specialties taught here is zoology, you see, and more particularly, ornithology. Proper study and instruction should not be limited to books. Observation of living matter is indissociable from theoretical questions. It contains some very rare specimens that have been brought back from far away exotic countries, especially for our university, by the world's most intrepid explorers. Do you remember Alexander Valembois and his peculiar bird? Absolutely. His gift produced some very embarrassing long-term consequences. A poison chalice, indeed. It must be said, the situation could have been much worse, however. Oh, yes, it could have been terribly problematic. Here we are, busy chat-chatting, and look at the clock. It's tea time. Already? My word, doesn't time fly by? Thank you for a charming visit, miss. And thank you, gentlemen. I do know that with the certain one question that I asked, okay, why does this happen? You first ask them, they deny it, and then you go somewhere else, and then they tell the truth, and you come back to these guys. So that's what I gotta do. I'm gonna take a really quick- oh, Jesus. Arrgh. I'm gonna go one more time at the end. Let me go in here real quick. Because I do think there's somebody on that ladder. There we go. He's up on the ladder now. Hello. Shh. Don't talk so loud. I'm sorry, but I was wondering if you could help me. Can't you see? I'm very busy. What are you looking for? None of your business. Now, if you don't mind, I am trying to concentrate. I haven't got a lot of time left before Professor Ponza's next tutorial. Professor Pons, you say? Would you mind working elsewhere, please? I, th I thought that was more relevant, honestly. Maybe it wasn't. I'm gonna go talk to him, actually. I mean, I'm gonna talk to the one professor. I'm assuming... Is Professor Pons is this guy? I don't remember. I don't remember if he had a sp if we knew his name. What is it you want to know, miss? No, I think... Hold on, let me ask this one more time. If I were to say, Forest Sauvignon to you, what would you say? Oh, let's see. Sauvignon. Sauvignon? I would say it's some kind of tropical shrub, don't you think? We are talking about the same plant, then. It is a very rare shrub with small, juicy fruits. I found a book about the Amazon, and it says that there are even Sauvignon plants growing right here in Barrackstadt. You wouldn't know where, would you? Mm, Amazon Sauvignon plants here? No. No, I don't think there are any. Highly implausible, but uh, you should ask the station master. He is keeper of the greenhouse at our university, so he could tell you more than me. Oh, thanks very much. There we go. That triggers me talking to that guy. Let me ask about that. I read in the library in a book on the Amazon that there's a mushroom called the Yangalacola. I'd like to try and find some if you have any in your collections. It just might come in handy. Yangalacola? Ah, but of course, a marvelous idea. Yes, yes, indeed. I expect I have some of that somewhere in my laboratory. I remember pulverizing it myself. Uh, now, 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 where did I put that container? Do you mind if I have a look around? I'll be careful. Oh, no, not at all. I wish you luck in trying to find something in the midst of this uh, scholar's jumble, but please, go ahead. 
You told me earlier about a lecture on some ancient Siberian tribe called the Ooks or something? The Yukals, my dear. Careful not to confuse them with the Ukistran people of Central Asia. Do excuse me. I, I wanted to know if your lecture is going to start soon. Your eagerness to learn delights me, my dear. But I haven't finished studying this marvelous mammoth effigy yet. Don't worry, I will call you. And see you later. Okay, I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. Okay, so... We're gonna look for those, um... Mushrooms. I probably should have mentioned... Oh, there we go. So I got the Yongola Cola powder and a test tube holder. Alright, so here's the tasks. Wind the train, which we're gonna do. That comes at the very end of this section. Distract the birds. That's what this is all about, by the way. Asking about, like, either the mushrooms or the, that fruit. That, it's that fruit that comes from that plant that he was talking about before. The Sauvignon. That, I believe it's that. That has the fruit that gets those birds away. Find a way to move the train. Yeah, that's a pain in the butt, but we'll take care of that. Find an egg. Find some... Okay, so... Okay, so yeah, we have to go back to the train to put this, uh... This one cylinder away that we got. Yeah, that one. Forgot, let's tick this guy Excuse up. me. <clears throat> Can I disturb you a second? No. <laughs> you could be a little bit nicer about it. Keep quiet. In case you haven't noticed, we're somewhere that requires silence and tranquility. Hello? So, you got him then, this air? Ah, it's you, Mr. Marson. Good day, and, and how are you, sir? I'll feel a whole lot better when this whole business is over and the sales contract is signed. Where the hell are you? I'm in Barakstadt. Bollocks what? What in God's name are you doing there? It's a magnificent university town. It would appear Hans Varlberg once passed by here several years ago. So if he isn't there anymore, then there's no point hanging around. I hear what you're saying, sir. But I have good reason to believe that Hans Varlberg is still alive. For the time being, I'm trying to gather extra information from people who have known him. What's your next destination? I'm not exactly sure yet. Doesn't sound like you know too much, Kate. I just need a bit of time, Mr. Morrison. Yeah, well, time is what you ain't got. Keep me posted. Okay, we're heading back to the train first. Because I want to drop this one thing off. Oh, God, no, not this again. Okay. I don't know if we can play it or not, I don't remember. But we drop that off. And now that's one last task, right? Oh, yep, that's one last task. Okay, we're gonna go talk to that, uh, guy. See, those are the birds we were talking about before. These are the birds that we need to distract. That's what all of this is about that we're doing right now, so we can get up that ladder. So we gotta go this way and talk to this dude. I'm sorry to disturb you. What can I do for you, miss? Where might I find some forest sauvignon plants, please? No place around here, that's for sure. I don't know what you're talking about. That stuff's from the Amazon. <laughs> you know, for someone who knows nothing about the plant, you seem pretty well informed about which mysterious faraway country it comes from. Oh, I'm Amazon, Peru, Papua, New Guinea, it's all the same to me. Gotta go. Gotta work. Wait, don't go! You know what? I don't think he was being totally straight with me. You think? And then he's this way, I remember him going. There he is. Excuse me, Station Master, but I need you again. Can't you see? I am very, very busy. Uh, no. 
Well, I am. Very busy indeed. But, uh, okay, okay, I think I can give you a minute of my time. I'm really beginning to think that this audio thing is a joke. I, I uh, he's by the he's the station master, but I keep calling him the bird guy. I'm looking for a kind of little juicy berry. You don't know where I could find some? Look, lady, the station doesn't have any Sauvignon berries, not even for Sauvignon. Funny you should mention it. That's exactly what I was looking for. Forest Sauvignon. Uh, Sauvignon, raspberries, red currants, they're all the same to me. And we don't grow none of them here. But you see, I have just read a very interesting book, which says that the rare Sauvignon berry is actually cultivated here, in the famous Barrochstadt University Avery itself. Well, if it's in a book, then... <laughs> don't believe everything you're reading, Miss. I don't know why, but I don't think you're telling me the truth. What do you mean? I don't know. How should I know where to find your stupid great? Go ask your professor, what's his name, Pons, the paleontologist. But you're the master of this station, so you should know better than anyone. Nobody tells me anything. I don't know. Go see the old guy with the fossils. I don't oh. think you've been telling... Now, wait a second. I, I never really intended... You have to believe me. I can see I can't pull the wool over your eyes. You're pretty sharp. Or... You're just not very good at lying. Oh, I'll never do it again, promise. I've just been to see the rectors, and they told me to get the train out of the station as quick as I can. Uh, I thought they'd say that. Rules are rules, and you gotta stick by them. Not a good idea to get into trouble with the university administration. Uh, absolutely. I've got enough worries as it is. What should I do then? Well, I, I suggest you move your train. <laughs> but it's like I say. The springs are unwound. Everyone seems to think it's my fault. The locomotive's engine might not work, it's true, but maybe there's some other way of moving the train. It's a possibility, I suppose. Uh, what were you thinking of, exactly? Uh, nothing. It's just an idea. Anyway, miss, you shouldn't hang around here. I have a job to do. Yes, sirree. Go down these stairs. Let's see what awaits us down here. Hey there! On the boat! Guten Tag, schöne Mademoiselle! My husband say, hello, young lady! You want to talk to us? It must be really neat to travel by river. Oh, schlecht the boot! I never forget it, that's good! For me, loca loca is fantastic! I'm a climb around with Ustet. Okay, you guide. <laughs> Excuse me? My husband say he like his barge and he not like your train. Too noisy. If you want to travel in Tin Can, you stay in Tin Can. Sure. I'm looking for a special kind of mushroom. The Yangala Cola. You wouldn't have any on your barge, would you? We never carry plant. Have you ever seen Amazon Forest Sauvignon? Yet, never go Amazon. Do you know if I can find some here? Yet, you must to Amazon go. Yeah, yeah, of course. Have you gone down to take a look around the station yet? It's amazing. You know, it's full of exotic birds. Me to my gear? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but pleasure. We no leave boat. Husband is land sick. I just met with the university rectors, and they ordered me to remove my train out of their station. I mean, it's a total joke. How do you remove a train that can't move in the first place? You don't have any ideas, do you? We know nothing of train. You up your own creek. Your generosity warms my heart. I have a little problem with my train. It's kind of broken. I've absolutely got to get it out of the station. Do you think you could tow it over to the wall with your barge? Lock closed. Barge blocked. But if the locks were open, would it be okay to tow my train then? Porcano! More money for that stack. Da, it's possible. My husband say we help you if you give money. Right. And how much do you want? Chiquante. He want one hundred fifty dollars. 
A hundred and fifty dollars! I don't have that much! No money, no bar. Let me offer you seventy-five. No, one twenty-five dollar. Out of the question. One hundred dollars and not a dime more. Correct. You have barge for one hundred dollar. Great. Now, don't move. I'll be back as quick as possible with the money. I'll leave you to it. I won't disturb you again. Do svidania. Yeah, I, I forgot that you did have to actually come down here because you had to trigger that whole conversation with money. And guess who we go to to get the money? Keith's getting some good cardio. This whole day, really. I just remembered what, what this pow this powder here, I just remembered what it's for. And that's for later. Uh, gentlemen, forgive me for disturbing you again, but I have a little problem. A little problem, a little problem. Everyone has little problems now, you know. They are kept to oneself, and they don't stop the world from turning. Nor trains from leaving stations. Some sailors have agreed to tow the train, but I don't have enough money to pay them. I was wondering if you could help me out. For a while. I could work for the money. Please wait, miss. We have certain confibulations to attend to. That is right. We must confibulate between ourselves. A collegiate decision must be taken. I hope that we are not indisposing you in any way. <clears throat> Why not? If it helps us get rid of that train. My word, that is a fine idea. What do you have in mind, gentlemen? Hmm. When you arrived here, you must have noticed a splendid bandstand which honors the main university courtyard. A unique piece of mechanical craftsmanship which no longer works, alas. Why, yes, we have very moving memories of its melodies. We're prepared to offer you a financial reward if you can set it working again. With pleasure. What do I have to do? Unfortunately, my dear, time and rust have taken their toll on this university, and our automatons no longer have a spring in their step. <laughs> you are going to have to be resourceful! To tell you the truth, there are a number of complex mechanisms here in Barakstadt, and it would appear that we have unfortunately lost their operating instructions. Your train, however, is an extremely ingenious invention, so you should be no stranger to complex mechanisms, should you? Uh, we are therefore counting on your ingenuity, miss. I hope that I can show myself worthy of your faith in me, gentlemen. Well, my dear colleagues, one more university matter nicely tied up. Okay, maybe this will trigger that other guy to help us out. I'm not sure. I'm trying- like, my memory's obviously fuzzy. Come on, go, Kate, 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 Kate. If you couldn't catch that, we fixed that thing outside that I showed you earlier. And then they give us the money to give to that couple. To help us tow the train. This thing right out here. This big thing right in the middle. But remember, we needed something that was like an egg. Let's just go down this way and see what this... What happens with this. Now this, I think, is more mechanical than anything we're doing right now. It is. What is it you want to know, miss? I'm under the impression that if I am to continue my journey, I'm going to have to open the locks on the canal. You're probably right, my dear, so open the locks. Whether they are open or closed is none of my business. You wouldn't know where the forest Sauvignon plants are kept in Bauerstadt, would you? Uh, why do you think there are Sauvignon plants here? I read about it in a book at the library. Uh, try going to see the station master. If such a shrub exists, he will have a better idea than anyone. 
It's actually he who sent me to you. I thought it a little strange, but he definitely said ask the paleontologist. You're the only one here, aren't you? Yes, yes indeed. What a strange way to behave. Well, I, um, I think he must have made a mistake, that's all. Nobody tells me anything here, and maybe you should ask the rectors. After all, they are in charge of the university. All right, thanks. Yeah, apparently that's what I had to do. I t had to talk to the professor again. It's also silly and stupid. I'm in the same building as the rectors, and you mentioned the rectors and the station master. I'll go to the rectors again, but they drive me nuts. Uh, gentlemen, forgive me for disturbing you again, but I have a little problem. A little problem, a little problem. Everyone has little problems now, you know. They are kept to oneself, and they don't stop the world from turning. Nor trains from leaving stations. If you can possibly get the canal lock open, then the sailors will be able to tow the train up to the winding machine. What a surprising request. Open the lock? What a singular idea. Our university isn't responsible for the functioning of the canal locks. A different administration deals with that, miss. Are you sure there are no Amazon Sauvignon plants in Barockstadt? Because I have just interviewed the station master and the paleontologist, and what they said really didn't convince me that there wasn't any here. We are quite definite on this point. There are no Sauvignon plants growing in Barockstadt. You see, miss, the Amazon Forest Sauvignon is a rare shrub that requires very special conditions for growth. That's right. Uh, conditions that are very hard to reproduce, believe you me. Difficult, but not impossible. Uh, fortunately, our garden has proved very successful. Your garden? So, there is a garden in Barakstadt? There it is. Oh, the garden. Well... If there was one, it would be only a little garden hidden behind the station. But our station master would be very proud of it. He would take very good care of it, too. Everything would grow marvelously if we were able to cultivate it at all, and it would be all down to his gardening prowess. And we would be proud as punch. And we wouldn't forget the role the paleontologist might play in this. What's the paleontologist got to do with it all? Without him and without his laboratory, how would we make the wine, do you think? And it would be good wine indeed, my dear colleagues, would it not? Oh, yes, a delightful balm to soothe away our long hours of toil and our heavy responsibilities. We would wait impatiently every year for the arrival of the year's produce. So, if I have understood you correctly, there are indeed Sauvignon plants in Barockstadt. They are cultivated in a garden behind the station then turned into wine by the paleontologist's loving care. And finally, the pleasure of tasting is yours. If I'm not very much mistaken, gentlemen, you have a minor racket operating here. Miss, you do go jumping to some hasty conclusions. We never said that. That's not what we said at all. Uh, we, we were talking in the conditional. You know, with ifs and woulds. So, what would happen if I had such a hunch? Hmm, you would have to keep it to yourself, of course. Yes, it, if you would be so kind as to keep it a secret. <laughs> it would only be a small local concern, producing barely a few bottles every year. That's right, nothing so grandiose as a business. Otherwise, we'd be liable to be fined. So, we can't count on your discretion, can't we? Don't worry, I have no intention at all of getting messed up in anything. Okay, so finally we got them to admit that there are those shrubs here. Now we go back to the station master and he opens up that room, the garden. And now we can really get moving with this story. If I can just go the right direction. There we go. You have been playing with me, haven't you? You knew very well there were forest Sauvignon berries in the station garden. No, not at all. I've never seen your Sauvignon things. You don't have to lie to me. I know all about it. You and the rectors are in cahoots, and the professor's lab has been turned into a distillery. You've all got a nice little smuggling racket on the side. Smuggling racket? Hey, hey lady, you're going a bit far there. It's just a little 
on the side thing we got going that's all it's just for ourselves hey you honest you should be ashamed of yourselves aren't you worried about the reputation of this fine university the authorities should be informed of this but we haven't done anything wrong it's not a crime can you open the gate to the garden please sure sure no problem right away miss okay we gotta follow this dude Come on, come on now, Kate, come on. Nope, nope, we're going this way. Run, Kate, run! Yay, he opened it. There you are. Please feel free to visit the garden at your leisure. And uh, uh, there was just one thing I... I'm not a liar, not really, just mum's the word. There is the reputation of the university to think about, and I have superiors, and I have to do what I can. I understand. Don't you worry. Oh, thank you, miss. So now we're in the garden. We're just gonna follow this little trail. There we go. There we go. Now we got the grapes. Now we feed them to those birds and we do what we gotta do. All this trouble just to get some stupid grapes to move the birds. Why didn't she just say, hey, dude, I need these grapes because it's going to help me move this train along. So, just tell me if you have some grapes. Oh, wait, that's the way I got to go. I just feel like if she was just a little bit more straightforward with them. That maybe, just maybe, it wouldn't have been this hard to get a straight answer from them. Oh, I did this wrong. There we go. Go up there, Kate, come on. to reach it. Oh, I have no fear. I, I think, wait, is it the hook or is it the tongs? Or the test tube holder? It's this, right? There we go. So now I got a cuckoo egg. And that's what we're going to use in that um machine up in the front of the university. I already forgot what it's called. It's, wait, it's on this. It's bandstand. Well, look what we have left. We only have wine the train. Again. I know I'm repeating myself, it's the last thing we're doing. So that's like the main objective overall. And then, so for right now, we need to fix the bandstand, which we're about to with this egg. And then open the locks. And then to move the train. So we're, we're getting close to the end here. Yeah, hey, uh, miss, miss, please, uh, excuse me. Yes? You know, I want to apologize for our little misunderstanding. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I brought you a bottle of wine. Hell yeah. Marachstadt Sauvignon. Very good year. Let me know what you think. I'm very touched. Thank you. Good luck on your journey, lady. Thank you. We fix this, we get the money, and we have that couple help us, and that's awesome. Here we go.
Okay, so we're just about done, everybody, with this. Well, like, a couple more things we have left to do. There we go. Gentlemen, I have managed to repair your university bandstand. The bandstand is playing again. This is marvelous news. We are really very grateful, very grateful indeed. Yes, very grateful indeed. We will look back on your visit with much fondness in our hearts. And now let us in turn honor our word. How much is it you need, miss? A hundred dollars, if it's not too much to ask. Something about it. <clears throat> we agreed to grant you the aforementioned sum, miss. You may now leave with your train. There we go. And while we're on the subject, when will you be leaving? Uh, yes, because now you should relocate your train as quickly as possible. I am pleased to say we don't have to talk to these guys again. Okay, we'll come down this way. I think this is where the couple is. Yep, down these stairs. Hey there! On the boat! Guten Tag, schöne Mademoiselle! My husband say, hello, young lady, you want to talk to us? It's not very polite of you to take advantage of my predicament. We could have done favors for each other, for free, out of solidarity. Favor, favor, Allah speak not full, Maria, speak full. Excuse me? My husband say, need money for leave. One hundred dollar, not lot for fancy lady like you. How would you know a fancy lady like me, really? Oh shit, do I have to put it in my, um, inventory? I'll leave you to it. Does yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I have to put it in my inventory, that's why my bad. There you go, here's your money. I've checked it, it's all there. I love how frustrated and impatient she gets with everybody, and how... Ah, you know, thank She's you. right. Not difficult get daughter, see? You are a real businesswoman. I'm not the only one around here. <laughs> we please to do deal with you. Now, you open lock or we no help you. Why didn't you manage to open them? After all, you don't have to be a genius. Ma vor vat pensi no sesto, declina madam. No se sa ye mar alles non comprendo, en allora caput, en andere bordel. Zir zwar moi. On boom telefonieren, caput caput. My husband say, instructions complicated, no understand manual. My husband angry, very angry. Oh, now telephone broke, kaput. Now that is annoying. What are you gonna do next? We wait, repairman. Well, I don't have the time to wait. I'll have to go have a look. There must be some way of releasing the opening mechanism. Take key. Seller always need key for lock. Okay, thanks. There we go. So where did the key fall? There we go. You don't always run, Kate, and that's kind of annoying. Kate, can you please run? Oh, here we go again. Hello? Kay, how's my little baby girl? I was thinking about you only yesterday because I thought it fantastic for a coat. You are wrapping up warm, aren't you? I mean, people in foreign countries never know how to dress properly for the weather. Mom, it's so sweet of you to worry, but I'm fine, really. The trip's a breeze, no worries. I mean, there's... Well, when are you coming back? Frank is dying to meet you. Frank? Oh, yeah, you're a singer. You two seeing each other then? Oh, you'll never guess the surprise he gave me yesterday. No, I suppose I won't. Frank invited me to a big charity show organized by, oh, uh, well, someone or another. Uh, anyway, they got him singing a couple of old numbers from his repertoire, and in the end... He asked me to go up on stage with him. Can you imagine me, your mother, on stage in front of thousands of people? Wow, I would have loved to have been there. Not too emotional, I hope. 
Oh, too emotional by far, especially as I hadn't even been to the hairdresser. Well, I didn't even have the proper dress on. But Frank promised me he'd see to that next time. Oh, he's such a cutie. And he's got the sweetest little... <laughs> I'm sure he has, Mom. It would be so good if you could join us one day. Let's see, when is his next gala? I'm so forgetful these days. I swear I'd lose my head if it weren't in the clouds. You just watch out, my girl. Them years will catch up with you much quicker than you think. I'll look out for them, Ma. Nice to hear your voice. Lots of love. Well, to you too, my little munchkin. Remember Frank? Don't forget Frank. Okay, here we go. This is where we gotta be. There we go. So... I don't know. I don't know. Wait, what about that this? That looks broken. Okay, so... 2766-6742. So now I'm gonna take out my phone if I can remember how to get... Oh, why can't I get my phone? Oh, is it because I'm... Now I can Welcome to the East Lock Control Center. To start, press the number sign. If you are using the Haltenberg Lock, press 1. If you are using the Morloff Lock, press 2. If you are using the Conning Pass Lock, press 3. If you are using the Barrackstadt Lock, press 4. To return to the last command, press the number sign. If you want to raise the water level, press 1. If you want to lower the water level, press 2. To return to the last command, press the number sign. To confirm your choice, press star. To return to the previous command, press the number sign. Your request has been logged. Unfortunately, our regional technician is currently on holiday, and no replacement is available. We will reply to your request within 48 hours. In case of an emergency, please operate the lock system manually. We apologize for delays to our service. Okay, well that sucked and that was a waste of time. So let's do this now. So, I'm just going to do everything that she said to do on the phone. So she first said the number sign. Okay, so now we're going to do four. And I think, or it was, to raise it was one, and to lower it was two, so I think we want to raise it. And then I think, said... Number, whoa, okay now. And then I think we pushed the star key? If that's going to work, it looks like something's missing. You know, I was putting in, um, pound, pound, I'd put in the first time pound four one. Maybe it's supposed to be pound four two. So sorry. Alright, so now, let's get out and let's refresh this. So, so pound four two? And then what was it again? It was star, right? There we go, I just did the... Sorry, loud. I just did the wrong number as well. Hey there! On the boat! Guten Tag, schöne Mademoiselle! My husband say, Hello, young lady! You want to talk to us? Right, I've got it! I know now how the locks work. So guide your boat into the lock, and I'll take care of the mechanism. Gott verdomm! Das ist eine echte Ladies! Alle etwa, Branche alle Dingen und obligados die Dame. Ach, seht, kommt und uns zurückgehen. What did your husband say? You, hurry up. We hurry to travel again. Okay, okay. We'll meet each other on the other side. By my train, okay? And then I think I do the same exact thing, but now I do one instead. Oh, 
Yeah, there they are. See, now that's where they are. So now we come in here. I'm going to clear it out. Okay, so now we have pound. Four. Now it's one. Star. There we go. Yeah, that's what needed to be done. Okay. We're just about there, guys. Go on, Kate. Dang. On the boat! Da! Da! Barge on other side! You still need us? Um... Help me? What do we do now to tie my train to the barge? Mademoiselle Takatak! Lokokokobitchen! What did your husband say? You attach chain to train and chain to train with barge! Hop! Catch it, sir! There we go. Where did it land? Where did it- There we go. There we go, now I add the hook. That's why I equipped it, good. There we go, there we go, guys. Let's get going. Oh, what's that now, guys? What's that? Hello, Kate Walker here. Miss Walker, this is Professor Ponce. I'm about to start my lecture on the u calls at any moment. Please make haste to come. Okay, I'll give it my best. Excellent. We'll be in the main lecture hall. See you soon. And there we go. We cannot go because we have to get that mammoth toy back from the professor and listen in on his lecture that we agreed to listen in on. What great timing, right? Ah, there you are, Miss Walker. Good, good. Uh, take a seat quickly. I'm impatient to start my lesson. My young friends, a very exciting discovery, unimaginable up until only a few hours ago, has come into my hands and has finally allowed me to complete my study on the mysterious Yukol people. Lights, please. The Yukols are a people from the far north about whom very little is known. They live far away, very far away, on the frozen borders of Siberia. This distance and the climatic conditions of the region, which are unfavorable to human existence, have limited the size of the Yukol population and kept it out of reach of the scientific world. The handful of slides that follow are actually the only documentation we have in our possession. It was a Russian explorer who made these drawings and took these photographs a hundred or so years ago. Today, we owe what we know about the Yukol people and their culture to him. We know that the origins of the Yukols date back to the last ice age. And curiously, evidence of their presence has been found in Western Europe and more precisely in the prehistoric caves at the heart of the Alps. This people, it seems, undertook a long migration over centuries towards the far north of the globe. The reasons for this migration are due to the importance of the mammoth in their craft, trade, and culture. They used them for transportation and as beasts of burden. The mammoth brought them meat, skins, 
fat and ivory. Man and animal lived in symbiosis. There's no doubt about it. Mammoths started to drift away from the region due to changing climatic conditions, and the Yukos followed them to the north, to the edges of Siberia. Prehistoric cave drawings, identified as Yukol in origin, first led me to the extraordinary hypothesis that the Yukos had managed to domesticate the mammoth. They are, to the best of our knowledge, the only prehistoric people to represent a man riding a mammoth. Hmm? Today, because of this genuine mammoth skin effigy, identified by myself as an authentic Neolithic object, I can confirm this hypothesis. You call forebearers managed to tame mammoths. Prehistoric man uses little imagination. He draws what he sees and represents scenes from real life. This familiar day-to-day -day object is actually a children's toy. As we have seen, Yukol existence was inextricably linked to that of the mammoth. They used its skin for clothing and to make the roofs and walls of their houses. They used the tusks to build the frameworks of their homes as well as weapons, tools, and jewelry. Curiously, the disappearance of the mammoth 12,000 years ago had no immediate effect on the Yukol's way of life. It seemed that for a long time after, the people maintained their strong bond with the mammoth through the centuries. As incredible as it may seem, the Yuko people have continued right up until the start of this century to feed themselves on mammoth meat and to use the skin for clothing and shelter. Their ivory craftwork industry is still flourishing. It would appear that to preserve ancestral customs, the Yukos learned how to exploit through the centuries the large number of frozen mammoth carcasses that were perfectly preserved in the ice of the Siberian tundra. They have been able to live mainly off this enormous freezer stock for almost 30 centuries. As plausible as this explanation may seem, it seems it is not enough for the scientific community who, I will confess, is greatly perplexed by the question. In the absence of acceptable scientific evidence, we have to make do with Yukol Shaman artifacts. The research department that I have the honor to represent today lends no credence to the myths and legends that these tribal charlatans peddle. We have to take their stories at face value. Mere tales to while away the long Siberian winter. The legend of the Siberian Ice Ark is a very good example and you are invited to find out for yourselves from the pamphlet that I had passed around to you. This legend would have us believe that today, somewhere on a lost island to the north of Siberia, there are living mammoths still in existence, a sort of hangover from the Ice Age. This small herd has been miraculously preserved for more than 120 centuries by the Yukol's tender care, and the island on which the pachyderms are said to live is called Siberia. My friends, I advise you to resist the temptation you may have to believe in this pish and tish. The island of Siberia is not charted on any map, and the idea that mammoths have survived to the 21st century is an idle scientist's pipe dream. The Yukos were sadly among the first victims of the colonization of continental Siberia led by the Russians in the 20th century. The Kolkhoz and Sovkhoz systems, as well as the exploitation, disdain, and humiliation the people had to suffer, marked a definitive break in the Yukol's traditional lifestyle. And since the collapse of the communist regime, the Yukol population finds itself confronted with the same political and social upheavals that other Siberian communities are experiencing. There are two consequences to arise from this. Some Yukos have lost their tribal identity and have integrated into the Russian population. Others, however, have sought long and hard to re-establish links with their ancestral culture that was lost under the Soviet regime. Now, at the start of the 21st century, the last true surviving Yukos have gone to live on the vast territories of their ancestors. Nobody knows today where they live or how they survive. 
Their very existence would be a matter for speculation if they did not turn up periodically at the tundra's most isolated fur trading posts to exchange mammoth tusks for essential items. There ends my lecture for today. Thank you for being among us today, Miss Walker. Please make your way to the laboratory where you will find your mammoth doll. There are also photocopies of my lecture should you so require them. Oh. Is it over? I am so sorry. No, I mean, obviously that was educational, and I'm sure... And yeah, it's it's relevant to the story. I mean, Siberia, mammoths, you know, Hans is obsessed with mammoths, so... All of this makes sense. It just went on and on and on. Like a real lecture. So we're just about done. We'll grab our mammoth toy and head on our way. Professor, it's me. I've come to pick up the mammoth doll. The doll is waiting for you there, Miss Walker. Please take good care of it. Don't worry. I'm beginning to get quite attached to it myself. Can I trouble you just a little longer? With pleasure, Kate. I'm all ears. No more questions, please. I just want to go. I'll leave go. you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. I am so sleepy. That just made it so much worse for me. And then here is this thing. The Legend of the Ivory Ark. This is probably important. I'll, I'll read this as quick as possible. The last ice age ended when the planet warmed up. Okay, I'm, I'm not reading that document. Now we're off to the next destination. Let's go back to Oscar. Goodbye, pervy dude. Goodbye, station master, bird guy. I'm not saying goodbye to the rectors. Here we go. Honestly, from here, looking here, like, that is really is a really amazing looking university. Oh, crap. Okay. There we go. Well, let me go up this way before I do anything. This is such a long walk. I'm beginning to think that was a waste of time. But like, look how big this is and look how small she is. Like, that's insane. Let me look at the task. So, wind the train, which we're working on right now. Find a way to pass through the gate, and then replace the mammoth doll in the train. Oh, here we go. Here's how you wind it. So, oh crap. If that's going to work. Yeah, I pushed the wrong looks thing first. Like something's miss I meant to do this first. I actually think this is really cool. it back. Oh, it goes back on its own. Okay. Oh my god. Hello? Where are you? Hi, Dan. I'm in Barakstadt. Barak what? Is that a town? I hope the man you're looking for lives there. Are you coming home soon? From what I gather, it's one huge university with an extraordinary station aviary if you could only see it, there are trees and birds everywhere. It's so weird here. Sounds like a great place for a bit of sightseeing. So, are you coming back soon? I don't think so. In fact, the train I'm traveling on has some kind of a mechanical problem. We've been forced to stop here. Us? I thought you were alone. Who's with you? Oscar, the train engineer. You're messing around with mechanics now, are you? Don't be so stupid, Dan, please. Oscar is an automaton created by Mr. Varlberg, the man I'm looking for. And he's not any old robot. He's a sophisticated butler type, if you see what I mean. He's a bit obsessive as well. Kate, I don't know what they're feeding you in Europe, but don't you think it's time that you came home? 
But my mission still isn't finished. To hell with your mission. I don't know why you accepted it in the first place. If you just stuck to the middle of the road, then we wouldn't be in this mess. We? If there's any mess, it's me who's in it. And while I'm trying to come to grips with strange towns, you, my darling, are sitting at home on your butt. I seem to remember we had nothing against my departure. It was only going to be two or three days, Kate. Please, try to put yourself in my shoes. Your shoes? Not only do I have to fit myself into your diary, but I've got to get myself into your shoes as well? Is there anywhere else Sir would like me to put myself while we're on the subject? Look, I don't want to talk about it now. Call me back when you calm down. I was perfectly calm before I picked up your call. I only wanted a few words of encouragement, not your disdain. Was that too much to ask? You can be such a selfish... Takes one to know one, sweetheart. Yeah, Kate's having uh, some trouble in paradise. Now let's get, let's get going. So now we just gotta get past the gate and replace the mammoth doll. Let's go inside right now and put the mammoth doll in there. Let's go put the doll inside right now. Oh, come on, you pain in my ass. Okay, let's go. Oh, come on. Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. I am waiting to continue our journey. We can go now. Oscar, if you tell me one more time something's missing, <laughs> I'll... Everything is ready. Take your seat, Kate Walker. We are leaving. I'll... Okay... Let's go, guys. Okay, we are... Heading out. What now? What are you doing there, Oscar? It is imperative that we comply with railroad and customs regulations, Kate Walker. <laughs> Oscar? Don't you think we could drop the trifling details once and for all? We need an exit visa to get beyond the wall, Kate Walker. <sighs> and you wouldn't know where I could get one of them from, would you? There is usually some form of authority stationed at a guard post that is strategically positioned to issue such a visa. Okay, see you later, Oscar. Yes, Kate Walker. So we... I can't go through that door now. We gotta go up to this door. People! Hello? Kate! Oh, is that you? What's going on? Well, I finally got the mechanical train wound, and I hope it's going to take me to Hans Varlberg. I had to sort things out with a couple of weirdo sailors, and they probably ripped me off. But now, I'm blocked behind this massive wall. You should see it, it's huge! I'm not talking about that. I want to know what's going on with Dan. What do you mean? I bumped into him at Maggie's Zoo and he said you'd argue. That's a bit over the top. Things got a bit heated the last time we called, that's all. No need to go overboard. I don't mean to be Miss Melodramatic, but he didn't seem in such great shape. He had a down in the dumps head on. <laughs> like Dan has a down in the dumps head. Well, yeah, when that shock of hair flops over his forehead, and his eyes mist up, and his eyebrows kind of creased together. I'd never noticed. Maybe I did go a bit too far, but he's got such a goody two-shoes image of me that sometimes I just lose it. And this case is taking up a lot of headspace. I was just looking for a bit of compassion. Well, you sure got mine. So, what's going down? Like I said before, I'm kind of getting somewhere, but it's slow. This Hans Vorlberg guy is getting more and more fascinating by the day. Okay, well, anyway, it doesn't sound like you're bored. Not like back here in the office. Every day is boredom day. It's just no fun without you. When are you coming back? Shouldn't be long, I hope. Look, I've got to go. See you soon. Oh, call us again real soon. And be easier on Dan next time, huh? I'll try. Yeah, getting a little too, uh, dramatic for me. Um... 
I mean, obviously I get it. You, you, you want to know more about her personal life and all that. You know. To understand the character. Oh, God. You want to get a feel for the character and all that. It's just, I don't know. I feel like if there's a better way to do it than through phone calls that go on and on and on. Hello, sir. Good day to you, sir. Captain Melatesta, Commander-in-Chief of the Barkstadt Border Post at your service, madam. Captain? I need a visa to cross the wall and to continue my journey to the east. They told me that you are the only person in a position to issue such a visa. Indeed. This responsibility is part of my duties. However, I am not currently issuing visas because nobody must venture beyond the wall. And why not? It's White far workers. too dangerous, in particular for a lady of your standing who is traveling unescorted. Dangerous? What exactly do you mean, Captain? The enemy, miss. The enemy. I've been observing them for several years through my telescope. There's one particular horseman stationed yonder. He's a scout from the invading enemy army, and he's been spying on us. So I have to be extremely vigilant. He knows that I know he's there, you understand? And as long as I keep my eye on him, he won't dare try anything. Are you sure? Please, take a look for yourself. Don't mind me if I retire, Captain. Please, madam. My respects. Okay, so we're going to look through the telescope, and we're going to see... See, we see something over there. It looks like a dinosaur to me. Um, but, yeah, so he believes that that's the enemy. So, you're on the top up here. Here we go. How strange. Here we go. I can't see a Cossack horseman at all. It's just a dead tree in the middle of an empty plain. That poor captain must have really bad eyesight. So that's done. So now we see what the issue is here. So, we over here. Why can't I get it? Look! Right? Broken glasses. If they belong to the captain, then he sure has eye problems going by those lenses. Okay, so this is what we do. Now, I think we do this one first. One thing that wasn't mentioned before, because I didn't read, you know, the book, but basically this Yangola cola powder, it, it, it the Yangola cola helps with eyesight. So... The captain will never swallow this powder as it is. No, obviously. I just didn't want to... Okay, just... It's not the enemy that worries me. It's your eyesight. Oops. I saw a pair of broken glasses in your office. Maybe that explains why you see a horseman where there is only a dead tree. No need. A dead tree. That is preposterous. It is the enemy at our gates, miss. There is no doubt about it. But don't you worry. I am here at my post to watch over us. Please, Captain. Don't be angry. What are you insinuating, miss? My sight is perfect. I refuse to let you sully my reputation. Miss, this discussion is now over. Well, I'm trying to... Here we go. I should have started with the wine. Now I shall put the powder in. Can I not? Colonel, sir! There we go. Captain, miss. But you have the air of a great officer. Uh, you flatter me, miss. Unfortunately, I'm afraid that we frontier soldiers are often forgotten by the military administration. Ah, oh, there's no justice. I sympathize with you, Captain. Let us forget our worries for a moment and have a little drink together, in the name of friendship. Uh, it would be my pleasure, miss, but the regulations strictly forbid it. Come on. A little glass of wine never hurt anybody, and nobody need know. Wine, miss? You are putting me in a very delicate situation. Don't deny yourself, Captain. Just a little glass. I assure you, it is excellent. Well, perhaps just a drop. Here's your glass. To your good health, Captain. And to yours, miss. Hmm. It's been a long time since I've drunk wine in such pleasant company. 
I admit, it is excellent. Isn't it? You wouldn't think it came from Barakstadt. It is made from the Amazon Forest Sauvignon grape that has been miraculously conserved and cultivated in the station garden. Well, well, well. Snitch. The university authorities kept that one to themselves. You know, Captain, it is essential that I continue my journey eastwards. Please, don't even think about it. As I've said, it's extremely dangerous. The enemy is spying on us. Perhaps your Cossack horseman isn't quite what you thought. Perhaps it's just a dead tree twisted into a strange shape. You should take another look. You never know. Go on, Captain. Give it a try. So be it. I will make this concession to the fairer sex, miss. But it does seem to be quite ridiculous. Incredible. How is this possible? By what strange magic? How could I have been so wrong for so long? The enemy was only a tree. I'm so ashamed. It's not that bad, Captain. It's only human to make mistakes, after all. A tree? Nothing but a dead tree! Pull yourself together, Captain. It's okay. And now I suppose there's nothing stopping you from issuing me a visa? Yes, of course. There is no more danger. All these years. And now the Cossack has gone. There is nothing left to watch. Captain, you should be delighted. From now on, you don't have to stay pinned to your watchtower. Travel can start up again normally. You will be able to resume your regular duties like issuing entrance and exit visas. You are right. I will sign you a visa to cross the wall frontier immediately. A thousand apologies. Here, miss. This just takes ages to get through the conversation. Authorization to cross the border. He signed it. So basically, Thank you, that's Captain. it. That's and keep your eyes open. <sighs> miss, if we could keep this between ourselves, please. For the sake of my honor, you understand? You have my promise, Captain. Yeah, I just want to get out of here. Here is the visa. I hope it's regulation, my dear Oscar. Mm hmm? Mm hmm. It is regulation. Here is your ticket. Have a good journey, Kate Walker. So, can we go now? Indeed. We are already very late, Kate Walker. <sighs> Let's go, Oscar. Let's go, buddy. Your ticket, please. You know, Oscar, you might not think so, but I also know a thing or two about procedure, and that's one bit of procedure I'm not going to forget about easily. As you wish, Kate Walker. Yes. For once, we're going to do things as I wish. Okay, but you didn't give him the ticket. Here we go. Here you go, Oscar. Now, please return to your seat, Kate Walker. Yes, Oscar. Immediately, Oscar. Finally. We're heading out to another place.
I was gonna go, um, you go outside and talk to Oscar, and they talk a little bit about this place, but I'm actually just gonna leave it here. Gonna wrap this up, because I am tired, and, uh, it's just time to, to end the day. Uh, I, I, I like it, it's, um, very unique. Overall a good game. So there you have it. Have a great day, guys. See you next time.